we present the case of a laparoscopic foreign body removal to highlight some of the clinical decision-making elements that arose during surgery. The case is that of a 74-year-old man with a history of atrial fibrillation on Coumadin, hypertension, and diabetes. He presented with a two-day history of abdominal pain, mostly epigastric and right upper quadrant. He was febrile but hemodynamically stable. An abdominal CT scan was performed, initially leading the team towards a diagnosis of an acute cholecystitis. On these images, we can see some fat stranding and inflammatory changes around the duodenum and the hepatic flexure, as well as the gallstone and some thickening of the gallbladder wall. However, looking more closely at these images, one can notice a linear hyperdensity in the periduodenal region with surrounding soft tissue fat stranding. This most likely represented a microperforation of the second part of the duodenum from a foreign body. There was no evidence of free air and the gallbladder changes were felt to be reactive. It was discussed with the patient and he was consented for a laparoscopic exploration and foreign body removal with cholecystectomy if intraoperatively indicated. General anesthesia was induced and the patient was placed in a split leg position. We inserted our trocars as we would for a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. We inspected the abdomen and turned our attention to the right upper quadrant where a phlegmon around the second stage of the duodenum was found. We carefully and bluntly dissected the inflammatory tissue planes to identify the lateral border of the duodenum, taking care not to injure it. A linear metallic structure was seen. We were able to identify and remove the foreign body that appeared to be a bristle from a barbecue brush. There was no evidence of injury to the duodenum. With the barbecue bristle out of the abdomen, we turned our attention to the gallbladder. It was indeed found to be inflamed and somewhat distended. We asked, could there also be an element of acute cholecystitis? The patient had cholelithiasis but did not report any history of biliary colic in the past. We were faced with a dilemma. The inflamed gallbladder appeared to be only secondarily inflamed. However, the patient did have a gallstone and the gallbladder wall was inflamed. Finally, we did not feel as though it was the culprit in the patient's presenting illness and opted not to do a cholecystectomy. At this point, another question came up, whether we needed to do an intraoperative gastroscopy or not. Although there was no evidence of duodenal perforation on laparoscopic exploration, we opted to do an intraoperative gastroscopy to better evaluate the duodenum. The gastroscopy was then performed, the duodenum was intact, and there were no air bubbles on insufflation of the duodenum as seen in the video. The end of the case presented another dilemma in our clinical decision-making. Should we leave a drain? Seeing as though there was a big inflammatory reaction, we opted to leave a Jackson Pratt drain. However, was it necessary? The drain was placed adjacent to the site where the foreign body was removed and sutured to the abdominal wall. The patient did well postoperatively and was discharged in a stable condition on the second postoperative day. This video highlights some of the decision-making elements involved in this case, and I leave these issues up for discussion. Should we have removed the gallbladder that looked inflamed? Was it necessary to leave a drain? Was it necessary to do an intraoperative gastroscopy? Thank you.